Thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Wilson. And I'm Chris Emke. And this is Diesel Performance Podcast. Uh, today, we're back in the studio to talk about selecting the perfect injectors for perfect your next injector. diesel build. Perfect injector. That's right. We get a lot of calls in the shop here. You know, guys have newer trucks, older trucks. Uh, they're doing preventative maintenance because they know their injectors are out, looking to upgrade. Uh, guys with newer trucks that are just looking for more power. Uh, we get a wide range array of questions. And uh, we thought it'd be a great opportunity to kind of dive into the do's and don'ts or being a little more educated on what sizing of injectors are, what are the positives and weaknesses, and what's the best for that actual purpose and build. That's right. So I'm going to be presenting Chris with a couple of different scenarios, uh, giving him some example trucks and customer profiles, and then he'll go through and make some recommendations on not just the injectors, but also pumps, accessories, what else goes with them, what else should I know about it as I start to dive into it. Uh, before we do go into all of our details here, uh, I did want to give a shout out to all of our sponsors. So number one, XDP. Uh, this is your one-stop shop for diesel performance. They offer everything you're looking for to keep your diesel running healthy and making more power. Uh, visit xdp.com today to get the best deals and parts for your truck. Duramax Tuner. Uh, they provide custom tuning, upgraded turbochargers for your Cummins your GM, Duramax, and Power Stroke needs. And WC Fab uh, is an industry leader for diesel performance specialists, looking for anything from traction bars to intercooler pipes, fabricated intakes, so much more. And of course, we've always talked about their awesome custom powder coating. And then Extra G Performance, we're no stranger to them. Uh, your one-stop shop for all your common rail injector and injector pump needs, from stock all the way to 500% over and everything in between, <laughs> uh, they can get you covered. Absolutely correct. Uh, all right, diving in today, Chris. I'm excited. We're going to jump right into these all right. here. All right, I got to <laughs> warm up. Now, the first scenario I think is one that I've dealt with a lot okay. uh, as far as dealing with customers on the phone and through social media, and that's talking about an 06 LBZ. Call it like 250,000 miles okay. on it. They usually have like, this is a worked truck, right? Yeah. It, it's, it has changed hands it's a few times. Second or third hand. Yeah, right for right. sure. Uh, usually we're talking about a guy with a built transmission, an S475 single. Big tires, exhaust, intake, lift pump, sump. He's gone through, he's done everything. He's even jumped up to like dual CP3s. Oh wow, so he's in preparation of an, an injector. He knows point. that this is coming. Yep. What the question is though is like, if, if I own this truck, if it's me, and it's a weekend warrior, it's not my daily driver, I don't tow a ton with it, I really have it to have fun with it, and I've already got the dual CP3s, I've got a big S475 single, yep. my buddies are telling me that this is huge potential in power. I can make eight, 900 horsepower with this setup, mm -hmm. but I need the right injectors. Now, I still want to drive it on the street. So it's not going to be just a Dino Queen. I'm not going to cage it. Okay. It's a weekend warrior, right? I want to go out and show off with it, and I want to hit the dinos a few times a year and have some fun, man. How big of injectors can I go with this setup? So when you talk common rail injection, right, you always have that ability to scale an injector and, and tune the injector. So. When I do uh, any type of an injector recommendation comes in, it's supporting what the end goal of the truck is. When you talk about drivability and you talk about smoke output and you talk about those things, a lot of that's going to be dictated upon the turbocharger that you go with and then, of course, the tuning that you, know, you would choose to go with. Right. So on a setup like this, dual fueler, you know, a single S475, I'm just going to go on a limb and assume this is a stock bottom end LBZ with 250,000 miles. Oh, for sure. Um, Realistically, I would say 100% over for this, okay? 100% over injector, uh, which 100% over is good for about 900, 950 horsepower, full tilt, but you have the dual fueler to support it. You have the S475, which that turbo by itself is gonna be good for you know about 900 horsepower. Um, so I don't wanna shortchange an end user with that. I would like to take an injector and bring it into the build that is going to complement and match the other components. Okay. Now. I would not recommend taking a stock LBZ engine to 900 horsepower or 800 <laughs> horsepower for that matter. Um, so again, that conversation would come into play of like, okay, the perfect match injector would be this. We can scale the tune back to make 700 horse for now, which I think is really potent for a stock LBZ bottom end. Yeah. Um, you know, I would hope that this specific individual has already kind of created a, a, a pathway of knowing that he's going to do a motor within due time. Um, 
But I would say 100 over, I mean, you could get away with a smaller injector like a 60, but the problem then is, is then you do a motor build and you want to turn it up, you're going to limit yourself when you have great dual fuelers, this great big single turbo, and then you're going to be limited on an injector. So for those reasons, I would say 100 over. Okay, 100 over and then bring it back a little bit. I like that too. And I noticed generally on a factory setup with like the factory calibration, you generally have more air than fuel. That yeah, keeps the truck running clean, right? Of course. And then as we start to upgrade, we know that most trucks are going to run out of turbo and we'll have more injector than we can right. lean on. But the factory... Even once you've maxed out your turbo, you generally haven't maxed out your injectors. So your no, injectors right. have a lot of life. So like factory cal seems to run your injectors at like, I don't know, I don't want to say 50% capacity, but probably around 50% well, capacity I mean, of what wanna, they're capable of. If you want to talk in, in these terms, I would say, you know, 50, 60% capacity. It runs at a very low injection pulse width. Right. Um, so the theory when we talk about injector upgrades and, and doing bigger injectors is if an injector is capable of a certain power output, you kind of want to spec that around the build. So, for example, a 60% injector, which is generally good for about 800 horse, I would not recommend a 60% over to make 800 horse. Exactly. You know, you want to go a little bit bigger, scale the injector back, then you're playing with less timing, less injection duration. So it's more or less of understanding, this is the power level I want, I want to do it as reliably as possible. Right? Yeah. What's the most efficient way I can make that power? And then you back into that injector. Now, with that being said, why not go to 200s and scale them back? Well, there's um, there's more is good and more than that's better type <laughs> scenario. A little is good, work. more is yeah. better. Um, yeah. So you want to be tasteful in the injector profile, I guess you would say. A 200% over injector is crazy big. Like you're talking 13, 1400 horsepower worth of fuel. That's a lot of injector to control. Um, so usually when you're talking to a guy about eight or 900 horsepower, you're going to get some drivability quality, you know, issues, a little bit of smoke, not a lot, you know, just, there's going to be a little something it's hundred over is still a big injector yeah. control, but then you double that to a 200 over, um, you know, again, there's a purpose in certain builds. Um, but for someone who's a weekend warrior, I consider it a street truck, understanding the setup of the truck. Um, so I'm pretty sure that at 150% uh, over and more, you're getting into body modifications on a Duramax they set of offer, They offer so, both options yeah. there. So once you get into that, your, your control is very different, it right? Is, because the, the internal body of the injector has been modified. There's also a higher cost with it. Also, like there is this thing about fuel atomization. Yeah. So as we go to larger injectors, we're assuming that that's being backed up by injector supply, injector pressure. Right. We're getting more rail pressure. We're running these things at higher levels. And we're going to get that fuel to turn from a pure liquid being drizzled in there <laughs> right. to, to an actual mist so it can combust right. evenly across the cylinder. So as we get into really large injectors and we go to try to dial those back and run them at 10% capacity instead there's of 50% so capacity, control that you have. there's really only so much you can do to make that happen. No, and I think, you know, when you start talking in an injector of that size, like I mentioned before, it's a purpose build at that point. Yeah. It's no longer a sh weekend warrior, street <laughs> truck. When you start talking 200, 300% over body mod, no body mod, you're talking a purpose built vehicle, whether it's a Dino Queen sled puller, drag racer, something along those lines. Gotcha. Gotcha. Love that. Well, let's talk about a sled puller. Let's jump in. Let's let's kind of go a totally different route here and say L5P. Something oh, wow. brand new. Something, something like a 17 L5P, 25 on the racks, so like barely any miles. Yeah, um, yeah. Sled pull truck, fully deleted. Something I know we don't talk Whoa. about on the podcast a lot, right? So, but but if we're given a scenario, we we know lots of guys with deleted L five P's. It's not a secret, um, and a lot of them do run something like a an S four seventy two S X E. All the piping, they've they've gotten everything powder coated. Yeah. It looks beautiful. They got the big tires. You know, they're running thirty fives. They got some nice traction bars. Yeah. They got a stock high pressure pump, okay. no lift pump. Okay, but they got this S four seventy two, and they want no. How big of injectors should I throw at this thing? Do I need a pump to go with it? Yeah. So a single 472, we've seen it on the dyno. They've backed up mid-low nines, like impressive rear wheel power. So nice. Um, but that's going to come with the cost of injector and a pump. Okay. So we've proven on the L5P platform, you could get to 700 wheel horsepower, stock injector, stock injector pump, stock lift pump. That's insane. Stock fuel system. Um, you can do a injector pump upgrade. Whirly Custom Fab actually offers an Exergy CP3 with Whirly's proprietary conversion kit. So they actually do have those kits available. That's awesome. Um, so I would say a really good match for a 472 is 60s and a 12 mil. 
Okay, only Perfect. 60s. Yep, only 60s. So the injector is bigger on an L5P than what we would be familiar with with some of the older trucks. Okay. So a 60% over is good for 1,000 wheel horsepower. 12 mil pump is going to kind of be right in that same arena. Yeah. With the 472, I think that that would be a really nice combination and still retain a lot of good drivability characteristics. Right. right. Now, we have guys that we've talked to that have 200s, 150s, 100s. Um, <laughs> I think that again, it kind of comes down to what are you doing with the truck, yeah. right? Is, is this going to be a purpose-built, you know, drag truck? Street if truck, I am, if whatever. I am a dedicated sled pull truck, is is there such a thing as too big? If I am you know, purpose-built, I'm only going to go and sled pull with it. And I have heard that no matter how much fuel you throw at a turbo, if you throw more, you'll get more out of it. Oh wow! Uh, so if you're point the pass and diminishing returns, it doesn't matter. You're not getting an equal amount past. Yeah. A peak, right? You're you're getting less and less for more fuel you throw at it. I, but if I don't care, if I'm a sled pull guy, I don't run an EGT whoa. probe because I'm going to run it until it breaks <laughs> anyways, right? Uh, I mean, look at it from this. A 60 over will support that 1,000 plus all day long reliably. Okay. When you start getting into a 100 over, that that's a big injector. That's a real um, big injector. So from sled pull perspective, yeah, you know, you could go with a 100 over, have that added fuel on tap, run the engine at a lower pulse width. Um, but I, I would I would say you know what you could get away with that sixty and still be able to make this truck streetable on the road, still get good smoke output, still get good you know spool up and whatnot out of it and good smoke control. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I would say sixty or hundred. Those seem to be what I've I've had experience with with customers and they've been really happy. Yeah. So I think that's a really good combo between those two. Okay, I like it. Uh, let's flip it over to your your sweet spot here. Hit, hit me with some Cummins knowledge. Okay. If I got uh, an early five nine, uh, an early common rail five nine, okay. so like an 04. Well, 304. Or 304. Okay. Um, God, I don't think I've ever seen one with less than three hundred thousand miles on it. <laughs> so like, that's just pretty sure that's just how they come now. If you buy them secondhand. Well, you got to think, man. We're talking an eighteen-year-old truck. Now, oh yeah. You know that's wild. She's legal. Um, <laughs> all right, and now. I love talking to a guy who has a truck with that many miles. It's been around for so long. We're talking about injectors, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's all stock. The only thing I've done is an aftermarket clutch. And the injectors are good. The right, injectors, injectors are, are good. good. I'm just they're curious. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah. Um, what should I do? I have an aftermarket clutch. I got a stock turbo. I got an all-stock truck other than that. Yeah. Um, generally, you know, the first thing is, is what are your goals with the truck, right? We talk about this consistently. Um, so let's say in this case scenario, the, the goal is, is he might change the turbocharger up if his turbo fails. Um, he doesn't plan on doing an engine overhaul unless something fails. Right. He wants to be able to go cross country, you know, and, and haul and that's that. Um, I would stick with like a, like a, if we're going to stick with the Exergy product line, like a sportsman injector. It's a 10% okay. over stock. That's what Exergy would consider their stock replacement injector. Um, I've had a very, very good, you know, uh, and end user, you know, end result with that injector. Um, and it's going to be capable of supporting more power than what this guy really needs. Yeah, well, what about the 50 horsepowers for these? Because th those are pretty popular, too, the 50 and 100 horsepower, which is so the only horsepower ratings you get Bosch Motorsport, from Bosch. Right, Bosch Motorsport offers 50 horsepower and 100 horsepower injector increment in overstock. Um, generally, I'll play with the 50 horse injector on top of or instead of the Sportsman injector. Right. Um, I usually play with one or the other in a scenario where one's in stock, one's out of stock. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if I would say one is going to benefit you more than the other, in yeah. all honesty, for especially the use and of the price truck. is real. Prices, real. You're, 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 right, you're right in line. Um, the nice thing with the Bosch Motorsport stuff is they're all built off new. Okay. So they're not a reman, where with Exergy Sportsman, they are a reman injector. Um, for the record, I would never consider Exergy's reman to not be of the same standard. I have I, no I, concerns. I would not be yeah. concerned with that. Um, but I would say in a situation like this, I mean, this is similar to like my 07 when I had it with 350,000 miles right. and I had to do injectors. <laughs> um, you know, a sportsman injector in this application is is going to be ideal. Now, what accessories should I be considering to go along with this? Like, is it do I just need a set of injectors? I would say with 300,000 miles, uh, the CP3 pumps on these are very easy to do. You could do that at any time. But I would say with 300,000 miles and you're wanting to go another 300, I would do the pump, I would do the injectors, and I would do the high flow or uh, the high pressure crossover tubes. Gotcha. So the, uh, there's tubes that go from the injector line through the head that seat up to the injector to allow fuel to thro flow through. Um, so I always recommend replacing those. One of the big misperceptions that I do see with those is guys won't run OEM or genuine Bosch or Cummins crossover tubes, and they'll find some knockoff brand. 
Um, and I've seen some crazy, crazy failures with those <laughs> over the years. So make sure they're OEM Bosch stuff that yeah. you're replacing it with. Good call. Good call on that. Um, okay. I don't. Hey, I don't want to. Don't want to beat this horse to death. But I, I want to run through just maybe two more. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's hit you with a, a 13 Cummins. Let's jump it up to a 6.7. Okay. Get the Revmax built trans. Your old truck. Okay. Essentially, a, a 13 instead of a 15, right? But like ATS twin turbos, emissions equipped, yeah. looking to do the all truck challenge next year. Okay. So I need everything I can out of this one. Yeah. What do you? What should I do with my fuel system? So one of the unique things, we actually talked with Nick a couple of years ago when I still had the compounds on the truck and it was talking about potentially getting into injectors. Yeah. So with my 15, we were able to achieve 650 horsepower through factory injectors running a higher injection pressure. And that's pretty much the cap off of what that injector is capable of. Um, at the time, ATS offered their Vortex Aurora 5000 kit. They now have a 6000, which oh, is Jesus. capable of a little bit more. So I'll play, I'll play two scenarios for you. As an all truck challenge competitor, right, yep. for next year, um, I would personally consider doing their uh, ATS 6000 kit with okay. a Stealth 64 underneath it. Love okay? that. And then um, I would talk and touch base with the guys over at Exergy. I would like to see 30 to 45% more fuel. Okay. Okay. Um, now, in the scenario of an emissions on truck, you want to have good control over the injector, right? Like I know I have crucial. really good yeah. control over a stock injector. So, one of the things that I would do special is I would order. We'll go 45 overs from Exergy, but then I would also have them provide me their injector, injector data flow rate sheets. Okay. So this is the injector data of where that injector flows the specific volume of fuel given that injection on time. Then we can plug that into the calibration so we can actually fine tune and have full control over that injector. Gotcha. So I would say a 45 over on something like this with either a 10 millimeter pump or a dual fueler would be perfect for this application. And I think uh, you know that, that 700, 750 number would definitely be achievable if done correctly. I like that. I like that. I think that's a good solid driver to where it's something that you know you have the emissions equipment on, so we're not really going to see the smoke. What we're going to see is right. like rapid DPF intervals, like you know, intervals between yeah. regen and things like that. Uh, we're going to see bad fuel mileage if you get it wrong. Right. If you get it right, a lot of people are never going to know that your truck makes any power unless no. you go out and show them. I mean, that was <laughs> one of the big things. I mean, we are in an area where diesel performance is very up. There's a lot of deleted trucks in the area. I have a lot of friends that have emissions off trucks. Yeah. And we would be driving around in my truck and they're like, oh, this thing's slow. This thing's this, this thing's that. And like, I would smoke their truck. <laughs> so you're running under the radar. The truck is clean. And it's a truck that didn't regen very frequently. It was tuned correctly. And, yeah. you know, that truck served a really good purpose for its time as that configuration until we started getting into the single turbo stealth testing. Absolutely. So probably one of my favorite trucks overall setup wise. It towed like a dream too. Yeah, if you didn't own it, I would have loved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, last one, last one. Uh, God, this is probably the most common. This is call my favorite one. This I've is my favorite. Ever gotten call. about yeah. about injectors is like an O2 LB7. I'm pretty sure I got bad injectors now. I have all the telltale signs of my bad fuel mileage. I have haze at idle. Yeah. Uh, my oil is just a little bit over full. Not a lot, but just a little bit over Something. full. Um, truck's got a Stell 64, another drop in turbo on it. I got a stock trans. Uh, I plan on building it though. Don't worry. Right after I get this done and save up some more money, I'm definitely going to build the trans. Uh, I got a stock pump, uh, but I'm pretty sure my injectors are bad. What should I do? Biggest misperception in the LV7 space, especially, is depending on the company that they call, I'll call it camps, you know, they call these different camps. They're like, oh, I want to get this, I want to get that, and they oversell them on injectors. <laughs> so I'll put it into a perspective, right? SAC 45, SAC 30s, yeah. 60 overs, and then we have this 250, 300,000 mile truck that uh, needs to be tuned to be detuned for that injector. And they'll say, well, I listened to the podcast. You know, this is what you guys said to do. <laughs> it's within reason, guys. It's within reason. So right. I personally would ask the question of, do you plan on doing a motor build? Number one reason being, an LB7 bottom end is generally not capable of supporting as much power as some of the other Duramax. They're usually pretty well. 600 horsepower <laughs> is kind of that ceiling that I tell That's guys. There are guys out there that are making more, okay? Sure, Don't sure, get me sure. wrong. But, but from if a you're reliable. at 650, we would expect you to have a very short lifespan. Yes. That's so, in in my perspective, you let's say you do the thirty or the forty five percent, then you have to have the truck retuned or custom tuned for that injector, which is more money. Um, so I am very big with reliability, 
a drop-in charger, a stock trans, going into a built trans, you don't have any plans on building the motor, I would do a sportsman style, stock style injector and calling it a day. But I thought SAC 45s were better. Okay, so <laughs> we can get into, and we've had, we've had Randy we uh, have, Hart, yeah. we've talked about online or on our podcast before talking about VCO and the DIC diamond light coating on the injector uh, in, in the internal body of the ball and seat. We've talked about the SAC nozzle and what is superior over the VCO and understanding <laughs> the failure of the injector. Um, I think that the industry has done a good job of marketing what the SAC nozzle's capability is right. because all the newer style injectors are SAC nozzle based. Right. I'm not discrediting that. Um, but when you talk about running a 45% over injector, we'll, we'll pick on the 45s because I think it's most common, yeah. that is 700-ish wheel horsepower capable. <laughs> If not more, 730, 740, yeah. we've seen. Yeah. That is a 700 horsepower <laughs> worth of injector <laughs> that you are going to run on a 400 horsepower truck with a stock stock trans. And then you build the trans and you're able to get the 600, still limited by the stock CP3 pump. So you spend this extra money. But and you this never, is a significant amount of money on right, these, too. And, it's, it's, and this, is, this is every day we get these calls. <laughs> this isn't uncommon. So it's, you know, spending that money wisely, that added money that you would spend on the size of the injector versus like a stock replacement, given the, the purpose of the truck, Yeah, that, that's $1,000 towards a trans build, you know? Or that $1,000 is going to go towards doing the injector job right because you, you need to do an injector gasket kit. You're going to want to do high feed, uh, the high pressure feed lines, yep. bare minimum, which bare. those lines are expensive. Lines yeah. are five, 600 bucks. So I would say... Before you pull the trigger on doing any injector for any of these trucks, do your homework, do your research. There are a lot of different avenues you can go down for injectors. Our recommendation is based off of a theory, right? Our theory is we've proven that these, these options work. We've tested them and, and you know practiced this for years. We have experience with it. We have it. experience, yeah. but there are other shops that also have experience and sure. have you know some of that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's you don't want to bottleneck the truck up to not be reliable. You don't want to bottleneck the truck in saying, well, I bought these injectors and now I can't tow because my camper is smoked out every time I right, go for right. a trip or <laughs> my EGTs are hot or, you know, the truck just, you know, bellows smoke or whatever that case may be. So you want to be very specific because these aren't cheap. Yeah. Yeah, so and the not job's cheap. not cheap. I think no. the quickest one's still nine hours. No, right? yeah, for it's a like, Cummins, right? Like, I mean, yeah. unless you do it yourself. But, yeah. You know, and that, that those jobs stink unless you're a mechanic. Like, I'm no mechanic by any means. I've done Cummins injectors before. They're still not fun. No, no. It I, is. There's a hundred other things I'd rather do <laughs> than do injectors two or three times because I ordered the wrong ones. So. Absolutely. No, I, I think that's good stuff, man. I'm really glad that we got a chance to kind of get in here and dive into that, guys. Um, Hey, guys, stick around. We have a lot more Diesel Performance podcasts coming at you. We're going to be hearing from our super tech, Jeremy Garnett. He'll be out in the shop with an L5P doing Ooh. some diagnostics. We also have our um, remote support expert, Sean Lynn. He's going to be out in the shop fixing a switch on a Humvee Duramax. Well, not the one you're thinking of. Yeah. So yeah. so that'll be fun. And then, of course, we'll wrap it all up uh, when we after we hear from Anthony uh, Brunetti with some Diesel Performance industry news. Cool. Hey guys, uh, on this week I wanted to explain to you guys about um, three things that you want to look at on a scan tool while diagnosing a truck. Um, the first thing you want to look at um, is MAP sensor, the you know, mass airflow sensor, I'm sorry. You want to look at grams per second. Um, you want to actually see the grams per second move on the scan tool. You know, you want to see it start at a very low grams per second. So let's say on my scan tool here, I'm seeing 21. You want to see it go up to like 300, almost 400 grams per second at full throttle. Um, you also want to look at load and make sure your load is, you know, going from zero to 100 as well, or from 10 to 90, along with the grams going up. So along with that, then you also want to look at desired and actual turbo vein position. So turbo vein position on the scan tool here, I have 70% at truck at idle. You want to make sure those two numbers right there are moving together on the scan tool. So driving down the road, you want to see it go from 10% to 100% as you're driving um, and coming up to a stop, full throttle. Just make sure that they go. Uh, what I like to do is uh, look at a graph. Um, just go 
to your simple graph and then look at the graph so you don't actually have to have the eyes on the screen at the whole time. Um, the other thing I like to look at is fuel. You got to look at fuel. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go to fuel and then I want to look at my actual and desired fuel. So fuel injection data. Oh, sorry, I want to go to fuel system data, not fuel injection data. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look at actual and desired fuel. And the same thing with the fuel as that you do with the turbo. You just want to look at it. I have 59 PSI at idle. I have 59 uh, actual and desired. You want to do the same thing. You want to graph it or just watch that number. And you don't want to see any dips or it's staying too long. And you just want to actually watch it. Because if you do have a problem, this is going to tell you if you have a problem. Those are the three things that I like to look at while I'm diagnosing a truck. Thanks and have a great day, guys. Hi, I'm Sean Lynn from Duramax Tuner, and today we're working on this Duramax converted Humvee. The reason the vehicle is in here today is because we're working on a switch issue. Uh, the customer was saying that he had 12 different positions and it's not supposed to t uh, turn that much. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the knob from the switch, and it basically comes out with a little Allen key, which normally comes with the switch itself in the, in the package. There's a half inch nut that holds the switch on under the dash typically, and I just grab one of these sockets here because it's easy enough to remove. And then we have the switch itself here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that half inch nut. There's a little washer. And then the tab washer on the bottom is what we actually need to change on here. So what we wanna do is remove the clip Turn the switch all the way to the left until it stops clicking. And this little tab washer needs to go in the fifth position in here. And the way we check it is we just hold down on the corner here and we make sure it rotates four times. One, two, three, four. Then the switch is in the right position. And in your dash, you'll just put the washer back on, reinstall the nut. and then you'll just tighten down the knob. And then your switch will be set up properly for five position tuning. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again soon. One of my favorite trucks overall, setup-wise. It towed like a dream, too. Yeah, if so. you didn't own it, I would have loved it. Um, <laughs>